Hey, good morning, it's Dr. James. I do hope and pray this message finds you and your loved ones peaceful, thriving, and well. And yes, this morning I'm wearing my love shirt. It's like an epigenetic message being transmitted to you because this morning my wife and I were doing our walk early this morning like we do every single morning we never miss. And she said, you know what? It was 29 years ago this month that we first met. And I was like, oh my gosh. Changed my shirt immediately, got the love shirt on, want to give you a quick uh, opportunity to take a look at us. Um, this is our wedding. Oh my goodness, look at those two hipsters. Man, look at that hair. <laughs> and boy, did I marry up. Check that woman out. Oh my goodness, my best friend in the whole world, Deborah Jean. And I want to share with you something that um, I think all relationships, all relationships can benefit from. And you know what? Our relationship has had all kinds of iterations, challenges, so many amazing things and so many hard things that have given us what we have today, which I believe is one of the most amazing, if not the most amazing experience of my entire life, is having this marriage to my soulmate, my one and only. And I wanna share with you four things that um, I believe will help whatever relationship you're in with yourself, with someone else, significant, partner, lover, whoever it may be any other human being, these very, very cool rocket relationship intentions, I believe will help you. So I wanna share with you, these are kind of based on uh, what I've learned in nearly 30 years being together with one incredible human being and the different iterations we have been through spiritually, physically, emotionally, and just all the different levels of intimacy and vulnerability and being seen, not wanting to be seen and <laughs> being fully seen and then working through that experience to be allowing your one and only yourself as well, ultimately yourself, to be seen. So number one, this one is probably the most important one of all. It's how you go into each and every interaction with someone you love, including yourself. And I'm a big believer that so often in life, we tend to go into relationships with a little bit of looking for critical because looking for critical is part of how we're wired, right? The amygdala, the part of our brain, the reptilian oldest part of our brain is always surveying, looking for danger. And now, I mean, for hopefully most of us, there's not a lot of physical danger out there, hopefully, but there could be emotional danger. We've been hurt sometime in our life or just because vulnerability can be scary, um, the amygdala will play games with us and say, okay, you know what, keep your distance. Don't allow yourself to be fully seen. Always be looking with a critical eye. And I have learned that um, if you can shift from looking from the critical eye to looking with the compassionate eyes, the soft eyes, the ones that said, I am open, I am willing, and I'm ready to be seen. I am open, I am willing, and ready to be loving. I am open and willing to be soft and compassionate with every." Thing about this human being, including this being. Looking with the eyes of soft, compassionate acceptance. That is how I love and work on beginning every single morning with myself and with Deborah, and hopefully every human being that I have the blessing of laying eyes on throughout the day. That one will change your life all by itself. It's the intention and in how we go into each and every relationship. Do we go in with critical looking, critical contempt, compassion, openness, love. It's all about intention. Number two, there's been a lot to be said about kindness. And I think sometimes it gets overlooked in relationship. Well, of course I'm kind to my bestie, to my partner, to my lover, to my wife, to my husband. Well, you know what? Are we really? A lot of research shows that as we get more and more comfortable, sometimes kindness can slip away. We just get, um, we get lazy in relationship. And one of the things I have seen in my life so, so, <laughs> so openly and transparently is when I fall into that sort of mediocrity, going into the emotions, going through the emotions, automatic pilot, that's when I say, oh my gosh, you got to bring forward a lot of heroic kindness. Now look for ways to be kind because when you are kind to your lover, to your partner and to yourself, you are releasing hormones that literally increase intimacy. It, it increases your willingness to be seen, your openness to vulnerability and compassion. Kindness is a physiological relationship transformation maker. Don't forget to be kindness in all the beautiful, kind, open, common ways. You look beautiful today. 
Oh my gosh, I love what you just did. It made me think of another time in my life. I, I do my very best and I'm not always good at it, but I work at being better at it. That's the beautiful thing, right? In Chinese um, vernacular, they say Kaizen, which is simply uh, incremental shifts over time of knowing where you can improve upon the things that you love. Knowing where you can improve upon the things that you love versus getting lazy with the things that you love. Mm, that's gold. Number three, appreciation. A, a very good study that came out um, from a doctor who's been studying relationships that work said that if you can have a three to one appreciation to critical thinking or critical saying, you literally are gold when it comes to relationship. So for every one time, we wanna say something like, um, you know, it's not necessarily fostering the best, but it's just something because we're human, we say something. We got three opportunities to win back the confidence and trust and, and, and intimacy of that relationship. Three to one ratio seems to be the magic. And along with that, when we're in relationship, he, this doctor talked about the fact that when you're talking with someone, when you're with that someone, always turn to that person. Turning in versus turning away. That body language will do everything in relationship to trust and relationship to feeling like this person is worthy and you have given that person the opportunity to be fully respected and seen. Body language. Physiologically, yes, but neurochemical, amazing and emotionally, absolutely awesome. Number four. I, I love this one, and I do my very best to remember this one every single day. You know, my wife, Deborah, is an incredible human being. She's a doctor. She's an incredible mom. She's an amazing creative. She's got art inside of her in the kitchen. She's got art inside of her in her writing. I mean, she's just, she is literally an incredible human being. And she's also very kind of cool. You know what I mean? She just, there's not a lot of fanfare she brings to herself, which just makes me kind of choke up because she's just so chill about how awesome she is. <laughs> Doesn't bring a lot of attention to herself. But I do my very best to celebrate her joys. When I see her feeling good about something or I see her not being open to want to bring it out and be seen, my job, my, my, my beautiful, uh, spiritual, opportunity and responsibility is to celebrate her joys. Let her know that I see them, bring them out. Let me be the celebratory person for her to help her coax into her own willingness to be celebrating herself too. So number one, looking from being critical from looking to be compassionate. Kindness is absolutely the physiological, emotional, spiritual game changer. Appreciation Look for ways to appreciate three to one and absolutely lean in, turn in, be with, presence with the one you love. And lastly, celebrate their joys when they sometimes have a hard time seeing how good they are. Help them to see how good they are. So to my beloved, 29 years ago today in pre-med chemistry, yes, isn't that amazing? How cheesy is that? What chemistry was right. Not cheesy at all. Divine orchestration. So thank you for listening. Thank you. Much love and all blessings. Thank you, Deborah Jean. I love you, sweetheart. Bye for now.